very warm greetings of the day ladies and gentlemen it gives me a great pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to you all for this video presentation on analysis of a very rare serious incident and lessons learned during this serious incident the pilots made three unsuccessful attempts each to land at cochin and trivandrum and finally landed at trivandrum on the seventh approach without being able to see the runway and with no fuel to go around we must thank the god for being with the pilots and for saving the lives of crew and passengers now we'll discuss the sequence of events on 17th august 2015 boeing 737-800 aircraft was due to operate sector doha cochin the flight departed doha at 1940 utc and it was uneventful until top of descent into cochin the aircraft call sign 555 came in contact with cochin atc at 2300 at utc and the weather reported was visibility 3500 meter haze few clouds at 1500 feet and scattered clouds at 8000 feet during the first approach the flight crew were not able to make visual contact with the runway due to low clouds and initiated a go around at 256 feet After the first go round fuel on board was 4699 kg and the minimum diversion fuel for designated alternate destination bangalore was 3306 kg atc cleared the aircraft to proceed outbound for the second approach ilsr on way 27 during which the crew discussed the alternate fuel requirements for coimbatore and trivandrum also the first officer advised the captain that at trivandrum only vor approach is available the captain responded to this saying that Trivandrum reported visibility 3000 meters and is adequate to carry out the VR approach at Trivandrum while the aircraft 5 was proceeding outbound on the second approach air india express flight 474 which was ahead of 5 executed a go round and reported low clouds at 600 feet and broadcasted that visibility had dropped to 2500 meters triple 5 continued for second approach and again on reaching this decision altitude did not sight the runway and executed the second go round the fuel on board after second go round was 3919 kg and the minimum diversion fuel for bangalore was 3306 kg after following the mist approach procedure triple five joined the holding pattern or had cochin again and the crew discussed and decided to designate trivandrum 
as the alternate destination in place of Bangalore in order to gain more holding time over Cochin. The first officer expressed concern about the possibility of visibility dropping further due haze at Trivandrum. The captain responded that in case of emergency, they can ask for Coimbra too, as it is a closer airport to Cochin. However, no efforts were made by the pilots to get the weather condition at Coimbra and subsequently no discussion took place for diversion to Coimbatore. Triple Five informed the ATC about designating Trivandrum as the alternate aerodrome. When Triple Five was in holding pattern for third approach, Kuwait Airways aircraft went round since the pilots were not able to side the runway. Thereafter, ATC broadcasted latest visibility of 2000 meter with low cloud reported scattered at 400 feet. Cochin ATC informed triple five that trend is reducing visibility and requested for their intentions. Triple five informed ATC that they would like to make another attempt and if unsuccessful, they will divert to Trivandrum. Further, ATC gave a weather update to Triple Five that tempo visibility is reducing to 1500 meters in mist and low clouds, now at 400 feet, and advised Triple Five that in case of mist approach, turn left to intercept radial 180 and proceed to Trivandrum. On the third approach also, the pilot had to go around since visual reference land was not visible and the pilot diverted to Trivandrum. The weather reported by Trivandrum ATC at 0100 UTC was visibility 1500 meters in haze, winds 290 three knots and scattered clouds at 1500 feet and at 2500 feet. Around 25 nautical miles short of Trivandrum Yohar, the pilot in command realized that he was high and requested ATC for a right 360 orbit to reduce the height. ATC cleared the aircraft triple five for VR approach and landing on runway 14 with visibility 2000 meters. During the approach, the crew was unable to sight the runway and initiated the first go round at Trivandrum, that is, fourth go round of the flight. The fuel on board after the fourth go round was 1,324 kg. About 40 seconds after the go round, Triple Five declared Mayday new fuel. Thereafter, Captain informed ATC of his intention for a right hand visual circuit for runway 14. As the crew of Triple Five had declared fuel emergency, the ATC cleared Triple Five for visual approach runway 14. On the second approach circuit, the crew were not in visual contact with the runway, sighted the runway very late, and the pilot initiated the second go around at Trivandrum 
that is fifth go round of the flight. The fuel on board after go round was 898 kgs. Now the pilot requested ATC for a circling visual approach for runway 14. However, he was not in visual contact with the runway. And once again, the pilot was late in sighting the runway, was too high on approach, and was not able to align the aircraft on the runway, and carried out the third go round, that is, sixth go round of the flight. The fuel on board after the sixth go round was 662 kg. After carrying out the sixth go round, the PIC requested ATC to take left 180 degree turn and self position for landing at runway 32. This maneuver activated EGPWS caution terrain, terrain, followed by EGPWS warning terrain, terrain, pull up. The first officer selected ground proximity terrain inhibit switch to terrain inhibit and at around 50 feet radio altitude, the EGPWS bank angle alert also got activated. The first officer asked PIC at time 138.06 UTC, do you know where it is? And the PIC mentioned that just going blindly. Thereafter, autopilot disconnect noise was recorded and the bank angle alert was also heard. The PIC continued the approach with all the warnings and with no visual contact with the runway and finally landed on runway 32 on the seventh attempt at 0139 UTC. Now we'll discuss the aspect of situational awareness and decision making. The situational awareness and decision making of the pilots appears to be below expected standards. The pilots did not factor the following aspects into their planning and preparations. During the month of August, it is a known fact that the monsoon is at its peak and the weather changes take place very rapidly. The surface winds at the time of landing were nil winds at Cochin and very light at Trivandrum. Under such wind conditions, Visibility and cloud are likely to remain unchanged or may deteriorate further without any chance of improvement. Adverse weather and night conditions are deadly combination and the pilots should have been very alert and knowledgeable about the conditions likely to obtain during approach and landing. During the first approach at Cochin, the pilot went around at 256 feet. Since at decision height of 320 feet, the runway was not visible. The fact that Air India and Kuwait Airline could not land and had to go around due to not sighting the runway and the caution by the ATC about the deterioration of the visibility should have rung the bell in the mind of the pilots, but they continued with second and third approach without success. Both Cochin and Trivandrum, which are separated by around 65 nautical miles, are along the coastline. The captain should have known that if Cochin has bad weather, 
and deteriorating visibility. Same may also be the situation at Trivandrum. The copilot seemed to be more situationally aware since he expressed his opinion stating that Trivandrum has only VOR available and visibility may reduce at Trivandrum also. However, the captain ignored the advice of the co-pilot and seemed confident of making a landing at Trivandrum with only VOR. Light winds and the time of landing near sunrise at Trivandrum, both of which are not conducive for improvement in visibility and cloud conditions. Since visibility generally deteriorates at some doubt time, were not taken into consideration by the pilots. Now we'll discuss the stress and fatigue factor of the pilots. Now by the time the captain was very hopeful of making landing at Cochin, in second or third attempt, decided to divert to Trivandrum. He must have become quite stressed, as can be expected from any normal pilot under this kind of situation. Stress is quite evident from the fact that the pilot was not situationally aware and did not plan his descent in time to be at correct altitude for landing and had to request for 360 degree turn to lose height for the first approach at Trivandrum. In subsequent approaches also, the captain was not able to align the runway and was high on approach to land. When a person is stressed, his performance and decision making is likely to be poor and is more likely to commit errors, which happened during all the approaches at Trivandrum. One can easily appreciate the frustration and highly stressed mental state of the captain, who was under tremendous psychological pressure in the face of such challenging situations. During this period, all kinds of thoughts must have been going through the mind of the captain about the safety of the crew, passengers, about his own family, guilt, and even his professional reputation. Similarly, the co-pilot also must have felt very helpless and stressed, thinking of the likely accident situation and all kind of thoughts crossing his mind about the impending doom. Going around in six approaches with fuel just for one more approach and runway not in sight for last ditch approach before crashing would have taken heavy toll of any pilot. Next we'll discuss Crew Resource Management The crew resource management during this flight also appears to be below expected standard. There was steep authority gradient due to large difference in the experience and even age between captain who was 40 years age, was ATPL and had around 6000 hours experience and the first officer was 25 years age, CPL, and around 600 hours experience on type. Although the first officer did give the valuable inputs regarding availability of only VR at Trivandrum and likelihood of deterioration of visibility to the captain, but was not assertive enough in his communication. The captain did not seriously consider the inputs given by the flying officer, first officer, and a 
appeared confident of landing at Trivandrum with only viewer, since reported visibility was 3,000 meters at Trivandrum. There appeared to be no communication between captain and co pilot before top of descent for Trivandrum Airport. No approach briefing seemed to have been carried out for approaches at Cochin and Trivandrum. Trivandrum ATC had informed Cochin on direct speech circuit to inform the captain of the aircraft about the deteriorating visibility. However, as per ATC tape transcript and CBR laid out, the change of visibility at Trivandrum was not broadcasted by Cochin ATC to the captain who was diverting to Trivandrum. Now let's discuss the lesson which, can be, which we can learn from this analysis of the incident. The essential requirement for thorough planning and preparation for the flight by the pilots cannot be overemphasized. The pilot should have good knowledge of the weather and route and at the time of landing and plan for various contingencies. Pre-flight briefing should cover various aspects related to the flight, particularly weather and terrain conditions, diversions, and contingency plans in the event of deterioration of weather conditions. Monsoon weather along the coast during night is definitely a challenging situation and the pilots must pay special attention to the weather, its interpretation and rapid unpredictable changes. Calm winds, high humidity, thick of monsoon season and location of runway in coastal area should be the cause of concern to the pilots since these are conducive to adverse weather condition. The ATC and MET staff should be sensitized to the need of accurate and timely reporting of the weather and should get fully involved in providing all possible assistance to the pilots under conditions which obtain during conduct of the flight under discussion. Like a classical approach by some of the ATC and MED department personnel has been noticed in number of occurrences including at Cochin, Trivandrum and Koji Kode. Situational awareness is one of the most critical and important area, particularly during challenging operational conditions. Any lack of situation awareness on the part of the pilots can lead to catastrophic consequences. Situation awareness can be enhanced through proper planning, preparation, briefing, having good knowledge about the weather, terrain, about disorientation, illusions, about aircraft, its systems, navage, weather radar, flight management system, SOPs, and checklists, including emergency checklists, charts, etc. And applying the knowledge intelligently to maintain good situation awareness at all times. There is no room for complacency and the pilots need to be alert, vigilant, and situational aware at all times. It is very important to analyze the situation by the pilots in a professional manner and they should take informed decisions taking into account the various developments occurring during the flight. One, when one has been forced to go around, 
due to weather. Other aircraft also have gone around due to same region. And the ATC is cautioning you about the deterioration of weather. One should not be persisting with making more approaches, hoping to land. The pilots should be aware of their company SOP and should not change the alternate airport in flight unless the situation at the first alternate is unsuitable for safe landing. In this particular incident, the pilot had adequate fuel even after second failed approach at Cochin to divert to Bangalore, which had better weather and instrument landing system. Crew resource management training should lay adequate emphasis on problems associated with cockpit oblique authority gradient and how to address this serious problem which has led to number of accidents, oblique incidents. First officers must appreciate that the captain, however experienced he may be, can commit errors. Hence, it is essential that the first officers are knowledgeable, alert, vigilant, and fully situationally aware so that they can provide appropriate inputs to the captain in time. The input from the first officer should not be ignored or taken lightly by the captain. It is also essential that the first officers are assertive in such situations and the captain should accept such assertiveness in a professional and sporting manner. Inconvenience to passengers, crew, company, expenditure on facilitation of passengers like transportation, hotel accommodation, administrative problems, bad press, question by company, DDCA, ATC, etc. are some of the factors which play heavily on the mind of the pilots and their decision get influenced by these factors to divert. However, none of these factors should influence the decision to divert and the safety of the crew and passengers should be uppermost in the mind of the pilots. Three aircraft, including the one being discussed here, went around at Cochin, and Triple Five could not side the runway during all four approaches at Trivandrum, even though cloud base and visibility reported by the ATC was well within the minimum of the pilots for landing both at Cochin and Trivandrum. Hence, the visibility and cloud base reported by ATC both at Cochin and Trivandrum seem to be suspect. The standards of flying and particularly ground training needs to improve and the operators must ensure that the SOPs are drafted very carefully, which should cater for various type of operations and contingencies, including the number of approaches that can be made before diverting. The pilots must learn lessons from others' experience and avoid any repeat occurrences. It is pertinent to mention that Someone from the operator, like chief operating officer, chief of flight safety, base manager, and manager operations, etc., should be following the flight. And under such unusual serious conditions, be in a position to give some professional advice and help to the captain. In this incident, the pilots were of their own with little or no help from the operational staff of the operator, ATC or MET.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time to watch this interesting and educative video presentation. Hope valuable lessons will be learned and the pilots will be wiser to prevent repeat occurrences of such incidents. Wishing you all a very happy and safe flying and many, many happy landings. Jai Hind.